Hi, Greg here with another video on using technology to transform your business, transform your life. In this case, we're looking at Odoo and how you can use SQL statements to basically give you more options when you're building your custom apps or particularly useful in migrations where you're needing to pull a lot of data in. Now, before we get started, please click subscribe. Please, please click like down below and the notification uh, bell so that you can get notified when I release new videos such as this and so leave you know leave comments they help as well that interaction is great for YouTube and for me to know uh, what you're interested in so let's get started here and, and I want to start with a minute of disclaimer that you don't want to use SQL to write your Odoo apps use the ORM you're gonna see firsthand in this video why you want to use the ORM and why it's critical you use the ORM when you're building apps uh, from a professional standpoint now it with every rule there are times you have to break it and that's really kind of what you're doing with when you're using SQL commands in your apps you're you're going around the ORM but uh, particularly for instances like uh, the pros of when you need it is importing a lot of data. Like if you're bringing a lot of data in to Odoo or synchronizing a lot of data like in batches and things like that, having a direct SQL into uh, the Postgres database is a performance issue and you'll be able to create a lot of performance advantages with SQL at times. And that's really the primary reason I, I, I shun to even teach people this. It's, uh, but it's necessary to know. Also, sometimes you need to fix data and you just need to be able to write something and, and know how, knowing how to get into uh, the SQL through the models and, and navigate your way through it. This is gonna be a n nice uh, thing to have in your tool chest. So let's get started. So I, I didn't want to build up a whole app from scratch and spend 10 minutes getting to where we needed to learn something. So I'm pulling an example from one of my videos just a, a few days ago in which I built a REST API. And, and so I'm going to link to that video up at the top. And basically, we're going to take this ORM method of accessing the data, and we're just going to rewrite it using the SQL method. And it's not going to take long. This is going to be a short video, but it's going to be insightful for people wanting to use SQL in their apps. So here we have the code from the previous REST API video where we're using the ORM to just basically do a search against sales order and it's an empty search. So we're not even uh, giving any domain criteria. We're not filtering at all. It's just going to give us all of the sales orders here in a batch and it's going to pull that data in for us. And here it's going to say if for whatever reason it can't access this data because it's going to get denied because the ORM, you're not logged in, it'll say can't access the API and bail us out. If we do get data, we loop through it here and we reference this data we pull by looping through the sales orders. And then for each one of these, we're going to have an object here that we can reference uh, with this key. Uh, right here so we so it's it's easy for us to reference the data and it's also going through the ORM making sure we have access and everything and so we can see the result of this right here when we run this and actually I think we do have to have it actually running um, here and we'll see the results now we also can come to a browser where we're not logged in and hit refresh and you'll see can't access API because the ORM is preventing us here from accessing this model because we're going through it. So now let's rewrite this to use SQL. We're gonna basically change out how we pull the data right here. So this is gonna get commented out for now. And let's go ahead and make sales order, actually we'll just call it SQL equals HTTP request IEMV. Now it's the same up until this point. Notice here we're referencing the model. In this case, when we want to use SQL, we go right into the cursor. And that's gonna have everything that we need basically to have access that backend database. And we can set up our SQL statement by typing execute here and providing it. So it's really simple. This is the command you came here for. Select name from, and we're gonna do I got some kind of thing going on in the background and a cron job it didn't like. But we're not going to worry about that. Uh, select name from and then sale underscore order. Now, 
Notice that we don't use a period here, we use underscore when we're referencing our models in Postgres. So you, you want to make sure you're getting the right model. It's fundamental. Obviously, we could use a star here. So you can see that we're already, a, as opposed to this, which is doing a search, it's going to pull back all the fields of all the records, and you're, you're not being very specific here. Here, we're just pulling the names. Um, this isn't going to actually pull the data. This just kind of sets up the data to be pulled. So it actually pulled the data. Let's go ahead and we'll just say uh, we'll just say sales orders to keep it simple. So we can use the same uh, variable name as we are using below. And we're going to say HTTP dot request again dot env again dot cr again. That all is going to stay the same. And then we'll say fetch all. And that'll pull all of the records. It'll basically just grab these. Uh, everything and put them into a basically a list of the return data objects so what that means is when we come down here and we need this to be an S here and we're looping through these we can't reference by name anymore we have to reference by position so it's going to return us basically rows of data and each field is going to be a com a column so we can come in here and change that to a zero because this is going to be the first column of data and as you should know we're zero reference so anytime you're looking at the first column of data in a dictionary the, fir the first element you always are going to use zero so that's gonna hopefully with a little bit of result when I save this and what I might do here just to make sure um, that that we're not fooling ourselves. Anytime you're rewriting code, expecting the same data back, make sure maybe you put something in there to know that it's getting your changes and you're not fooling yourself making, thinking this worked. I've, I've done that too many times. So let's go ahead and start this thing off. And uh, make sure we're not getting any errors down here. And we didn't. Everything started up fine. And let's come here and hit refresh. And with a little bit of luck, we see this change up here. But look, our data is exactly the same. Actually, it might not be the same. It might have returned it in different order. I, I don't know. But you, you know, you got access to the order by clause and everything else that you would have with SQL here. And I'm not. This is not a SQL class. This is showing you how to use SQL in Odoo. This gets you there. But there's a very important thing that you'll notice here. Remember when we were in the this one we're able to get to the data because we're logged in but i had another browser here where before it said can't access api and uh, let's watch what happens there now now we're actually getting uh through this here this is still open i think it's just grabbing it's going to a different database it doesn't have records in it um, it's in this database uh, so if i go here and and so there's a security hole here that you're not you're not getting to see because there's not a, there's not a record here, and so let me put a, a record in real quick. So so what I'm pointing out to you is that if you're going through the uh, and I'm going to save that now, and if I go here, and this is what the important part is logging out. Okay, so I'm not authenticated anymore here. Notice. If, but if I go here to this controller, there's the sales order. So that's what I needed to point out to you. It just, I wasn't logged in, and so Odoo's finding whatever database happens to be there. But notice here, there's no security. It's just going right around the ORM. Whatever you, you're, you're, whatever you put in through here, you always basically have pseudo permissions to the database anything you could do a delete here from just type delete from and and it just go away and you and you'd wipe the table so this is in, this is why you don't use SQL uh, on your back end or when you're writing your apps because you basically are by design as soon as you're doing this going around this ORM in this case, instead of getting our can't access API like we did with our first design, that's the proper way to do it. In this case, we've left a huge security hole in our application where anybody without authentication can just come in here. Um, and well, that, that's the one that is authenticated, but this one is now not authenticated. And see, we can fix this 
if we came back in here and went back to the other way of doing it. So if I come back in here and change this back to be a name like this, and we'll do, uh, we always just want to make sure we're not fooling ourselves. Do a restart now. And when we come back here now, then refresh, can't access the API. But because this one's logged in, we're able to access the API and get to the data just fine. So important distinctions, you're, you're learning two important things. One is how to use SQL in Odoo. That's the purpose of the video. But it's also a, a, a big caveat, a big, you know, don't do it recklessly. Be very careful using SQL in your applications within Odoo. I don't, I cannot think of a single production app that I have right now in place out of like literally hundreds that uses SQL in a production step. I've used SQL often when importing large amounts of data. That's the only really time that I jump into SQL is when I really need to create uh, and eliminate a bottleneck in the ORM. So I hope this has been helpful to people. Please click the like and the subscribe and, and leave some comments below. If you're interested in videos on Odoo, please leave comments and, and say, I, these are the videos I'm interested in. Or if you'd like me to expand on a topic or if, if you think there was something here I could have explained better because it's the only way that YouTube has any way of knowing it, that you're interested in this content and so that people can even find it. So thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.